I'm Lori Alt from Sun Microsystems, and for the last oh, year to year and a half, I've been tasked with taking ZFS and making it suitable as a root file system. That's what I'm going to discuss today. So in general, what does it take to make a file system be able to be a root file system? First, you have to be able to boot off of it, um, although you can actually get around that. but. I mean, you could boot off something else and switch, but that's a hack. So you really want to be able to boot off the, uh, the, the system natively. You need robustness characteristics such as mirroring uh, and such. Um, you need installation support. You need to be able to install the thing because, you know, to get a root file system, you start off with nothing, so you need to be able to install, install it. Um, you need to be able to do swap and dump support. And you need ongoing management capabilities. You need to be able to upgrade pagets, snapshots, all, all the kinds of things that you want to do in order to um, uh, manage your software environment. So why use ZFS as a root file system? Um, for one thing, there's a benefit to having only one file system type to understand and manage. Assuming you're using ZFS for other things on your system, you might just like to have it all ZFS, not, not have to worry about yet another file system. Um, ZFS's features make it an excellent root file system, uh, and we'll discuss a lot of the things you can do with ZFS and why it makes it so well suited um, to being the root file system. And at least for Solaris, it's the coming thing. It's where all of the future, you know, the, the real emphasis and development and tuning and is going to be happening in the future. And so you'd like to be able to move to that and get the benefit of all that for your system software as well as all your data. So the ZFS features that matter, I mean, there's a lot of them that matter, but the ones that particularly matter for, um, for using it as a root file system is um, several of them. One is the pooled storage, and this becomes critical because there's no need to pre-allocate your volume space. Um, there's no need to set aside, you know, slice zero for this and slice this for, you know, just, just, just carve it up like that and have the problem where well, I have extra space in this one, but not enough in here, and no way to move this space over. So um, pooled storage uh, is, is extremely valuable for, for managing, um, managing your software environments. Um, it has built-in redundancy capabilities, such as mirroring at the pool level, which is really nice. You don't have to ma separately manage uh, mirroring for every one of your uh, root file systems and such. And it has unparalleled data integrity features. The, all the on-disk consistency is maintained. There's no FSCK. And so all the things that has been discussed before about ZFS, about how great it is for data, applies to your system software as well, all those same advantages. More uh, features that matter, snapshots and clones. Clones are writable snapshots. They are instantaneous. They are nearly free. They're persistent. And you can have as many of them as you, as you want. And that turns out to be very useful for managing software environments. And then um, ZFS also provides a volume capability called ZVols that we can use for um, in-pool swap and dump areas. So you don't need to carve up a separate slice on your disk for your swap space or your dump space. So you have one pool, does everything. So um, traditionally, this is the way you would have laid out your system if you wanted to uh, manage a couple of different uh, bootable environments on, on a disk. Um, and of course, you might have multiple disks for this, but this is just a simplification. You, you would have you know, a, a root file system, maybe another copy of the root file system so that you could um, have you know, one to operate on, one to upgrade, and swap between them. You'd have some space carved up for your swap and your dump, and then you have your data you know, whatever, out there as, as a separate, um, um, in a separate slice, and each one of those would be individually mirrored. With ZFS, they all just fall into one pool, and you mirror the whole pool. So you have root A, another root B, you could have root C, D, and E.